Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. I have a very special thing to do today, an unboxing. I mean, you know, they, they come and go. They come and go like the wind. And uh, the wind hasn't blown in a long time. And uh, so June, and, and by wind hasn't blown in a long time means the, um, I haven't done an unboxing. I haven't done a video in a long time either. Things happen. Um, just wasn't, it's kind of hard to get motivated given the circumstances we're living in. But it is my birthday month. And uh, so I, you know, <laughs> this makes me force myself to think about uh, positive things. And um, so I, I treat myself when, when I can. And in this case, I have treated myself to something extremely special because uh, it is very rare that I go for this kind of thing. Uh, let's unbox it. Tissue paper upon tissue paper upon tissue paper. There's no box. It's like a little smiley, isn't it? Two eyes and a mouth. There's no box, you guys. This is not a bag. This is not costume jewelry. Nope. It's something else. And if you do the math... <laughs> now, now, let's just do this off camera quickly, and then I'm going to lift it for you. Okay. I got a cashmere cardigan, Scottish cashmere. So this is the following the tradition of Chanel's Scotland connection. Uh, she always used to produce her cashmere in Scotland. We have a made in Scotland cashmere sweater from the pre spring summer 19 collection. The one that was dedicated to the launch of the Les Ou, uh, de Chanel, which the first three were Venice, Deauville, and Biarritz. So we don't have names of perfumes, and we also don't have the Chanel logo, which makes me very happy. But we do have the three main cities that are in connection with her pain, sorrow, first kind of boutique, and connection to her survival during the First World War in particular. Now, which is what is very cute to note. I'm going to try to zoom in or come in close. The extra bits that you get, which is extra threading, you know, the extra cashmere bits in different colors, white, uh, navy or blue and uh, black. Just in case something happens to the sweater, you can uh, repair it. So I'm going to put it on. The buttons are rubberized. Uh, that's where you do see the logo. Unfortunately, there's no Chanel piece that doesn't have some logo somewhere. So we do have these, even though they're gorgeous, but they're metal, then they have like a rubber coating on top, double C buttons, but they are kind of tiny. So this is as, well, this is hard to see in that. No, it's okay, you can see it. Can you see it? Will it work in our favor? Yes. But once uh, the the cardigan is buttoned up, you you kind of um, you don't notice them as much, which is good. But the feel of the cashmere on the skin is amazing, and my sales associate also has uh, a cashmere sweater from uh, from Chanel. And my sales associate swears on them. Now, I know by them. I know that um, that their cashmere is amazing. I was just wondering if it's still amazing after all the years, you know, if, if their quality is still really high, as it used to be up until, well, the last cashmere sweater from Chanel I tried on was in the 2000s. This thing feels amazing. So... It is very classical. We're talking actually more the Deauville Chanel, you know. Um, we're talking the early 10s. We're talking the 20s. We're talking Chanel discovering sportswear using really, really comfortable materials. Just everything is 
very, very comfortable. It's not supposed to be... Um, the sophistication of it is in the comfort. Now, it's hard to describe this while I'm talking to you and looking at, at, a, at a tiny monitor, but you can see the um, different patterns that run all behind here, uh, all around the neck and then down to its stand up. You can see the, the pockets here. You can see the fit more or less. I will have better pictures to also post. By the way, um, newly formed Instagram profile, Coco Chanel is in my house. That is the Instagram profile that uh, where I post everything related to Chanel. Super Jacob's Instagram profile has uh, not just Chanel, but has a lot of different things that are connected to my life and my passions and obsessions. And then there's a third Instagram profile that I uh, curate, which is Coco Chanel Privé, uh, where I post only pictures that have been taken during Chanel's life. So her fashion style, every, perfumes, everything that uh, has been documented, connected to her life. So from her early 20s, that's the first photo that has been taken of her officially, all the way up to 1971. So there's Super Jacob, Coco Chanel is in my house, and Chanel Privé. Check those out, the Instagram profiles. Now, more detailed pictures of me wearing this are going to, and close-ups of the actual uh, cardigan will be on Coco Chanel is in my house, which is the profile where I post my collection, the Fashion Bunker archives, and all the research that I do. So this is period, uh, Karl Lagerfeld with Chanel, for Chanel, Virginie Viad now doing Chanel. This is, by the way, Karl Lagerfeld. So this is uh, one of the last collections that he, I mean, the last being fall, winter 19. This is the pre-spring summer 19. So the actual main spring summer 19, which is by the beach, was a fashion show where he still came out at the end of the fashion show and was still movable. He was still moving around. So this is a collection that he did, or let's just say, um, styled or let's just say gave input to because the pre-collections are usually more classic Chanel not too experimental which I love now I can live with these names because they're connected to the past of Chanel but they're not logos that's fine with me we also have pockets right there uh, I have to although now in classic Chanel style the pockets are, are sewn together so you have to open them up and they do that with the cardigans they do that with their jackets with everything that's just classic Chanel and you can see that they're done by hand so that's a detail let me take it off I'm I, I just love it it was just I tried on a lot of things oh and by the way it was on sale <laughs> so let's not forget something very important 40% off because summer sale has begun now um, I'm trying to unbutton it as we're talking just to it, it just so I tried on several pieces jackets uh, mostly and um, this was the only one that literally just as I put it on it just fit it was made for me no alterations needed nothing they can alter stuff there for you but uh, I'm and it's a size 50 so of course French 50 um, this would be for female standards like a large or an extra large even but you know their sizes in some cases go up to 52 54 and even 56 however Size 50 is, is perfect for me also within their regular jackets and more tailored jackets. Every piece is slightly different, of course. Some pret-a-porter pieces are tailored more to the waistline. Some have broader shoulders, tighter shoulders. The armpit area is more elongated or shortened. But uh, this is a very, very unisex in the way it's cut. It, it's, it's actually a male cut. And... Uh, even the buttons are on the male side, I would say. Wait, I'm wearing... This shirt is, by the way, Yoji Yamamoto. So, but Yoji does male and female buttons on the male side. It's very unisex by now. Uh, yeah, these are on the male side. I always forget left and right. Because I'm left-handed and I'm an artist. And usually artists that are left-handed, we have a lot of difficulties uh, differentiating between left and right. I always forget what's left, what's right. Um, but anyway, it, it felt very natural to button up this uh, this cardigan. So usually when I put on a female uh, shirt or jacket uh, or that's made for, you know, and the buttons are on the other side, then I kind of just take that extra second just to figure out, oh, no, wait, I got to do it with this hand instead of that hand. But this one just floats. So I guess it's on the male side. 
And um, Kashmir is perfect. Now, it's perfect for many reasons. It's perfect because it is a wonderful material, despite the fact that it's so warm. Also in summer, it breathes so well on the skin and it allows you to not overheat, even though it is cashmere. It's bizarre. It almost has a cooling effect in warmer weather and it has a warming effect in colder weather. So this is um, also something to consider when you're purchasing. I don't know. Cotton has this when you're wearing a cotton t-shirt and, and then you sweat in it, it just stays wet and damp and you just feel it on your skin. But to, when you when you wear wool in general and also cashmere, if you do sweat, it kind of just goes through the wool and then out, it evaporates, but it, it stays away from your skin. So you'd never feel really wet. That's a wonderful uh, feeling when you when you wear it. Now, I'm not saying that you should wear this directly on your skin. Of course, I'm also going to always wear a shirt underneath or t-shirt. But what I'm trying to get to or at is that... Um, there is also underwear made of wool that you can purchase and it's way better than cotton underwear like you know undergarments shirts tank tops whatever have you just putting it out there in case you want to try it out it's it breathes much better on the skin than cotton um let's get to another point here uh my hair is a mess sorry about that it's really growing huh yeah anyway The point of the pricing. Since May of this year, or June in some parts of the world, Chanel has uh, increased their classic bag prices yet again. And there's been a lot of talk about it. I also made a video on that topic. You can check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, the link is either up here in the card section or in the description box underneath this video. Um, however, um, not all bags went up in price. The classics did. The, the best sellers did. I found some bags that uh, are in rotation and production uh, at the Chanel uh, boutique or produced by the Chanel brand since 2017 18, and their prices remained the same since 2017. So it's three years now that the price hasn't gone up and also hasn't gone up in the last uh, price increase. But anyway, the classics went up. Now, after this last price increase, um, I have. I can I can say, except for the 255 in Jersey, which I'm still kind of, you know, that's the bag I'm missing in my collection. Everything else I want, I, I have. I, you know, I could be surprised by some great seasonal bag that comes out from year to year. But I my concentration is now veering more towards uh, Chanel's uh, Pret-à-Porter. And uh, in general, their, their apparel, their clothing, because it's amazing. And back to the pricing... Um, they actually, you know, if you want to wait and want to poker it out, whether or not a piece you want is going to be there by the time it hits sales and sales, you know, it, it takes a year for a piece to go on sale, not just six months. So spring, summer 20, what goes on sale is spring, summer 19, pre 19 and, um, cruise 19, which would be La Pausa in this case, the La, La Pausa collection. So you have to wait. If you find something this summer that you really like and you want to wait for sales, you got to wait for 2021 and hope that that piece in your size is still available. Very tricky. Usually pieces are not available. I was super lucky to find it in this size also because a 50 is quite big. Boutiques don't usually order very big sizes. Um, in some cases they do. I mean, I was surprised at how many jackets they actually had in a size 50. However, a lot of them didn't really fit. And there's one I'm still debating, but we'll see. Maybe we're going to see another unboxing before... Um, before my actual birthday. So this is a birthday present I made to myself. Classic, timeless piece. The cut is quintessentially Chanel. There's no doubt about it. And it's just elegant. Plus blue color, white and black. I love black and blue. That's um, a mix. One of the first people that ever mixed it was Chanel. Usually people would say black and blue never go together. They do perfectly. I mean, this also just, I, I love black and blue. Navy and black too. Um, so the pricing turns out that you can buy two pieces, like clothing and shoes, for example, and you're still going to spend less than if you were to buy one bag. And we're not talking huge bag. We're talking little thing like this, like a camera bag. Uh, the minis, the square minis, the rectangular minis, forget it. They're going to, they're now with the latest price increase, they cost more than buying a 
cardigan and a pair of shoes together. So, and since Chanel's um, quality control in the bag department is lacking quite a bit as of late because they're overproducing stuff and they're sourcing out production. This is what we have to say allegedly, I guess, but this is how it feels, smells and looks to me. Um, you know, they produce way less of these pieces and there's, this is still their pride, let's say, clothing. Even though, even with the clothing, there's certain tweeds and stuff that I can't imagine Lesage uh, producing all the tweeds they need to produce the whole collection. I'm sure Lesage does, you know, the tweed pattern for the prototype and then when that is approved, they source it out. You know, Balmain does it too. They produce in India and then the tweeds arrive back to France and then they're probably cut together. I mean, there's a lot going on behind the scenes in the fashion business. It's a creepy world and nobody's immune to, um, unfortunately, to this kind of outsourcing of production and um, search of raw materials. But nevertheless, I do believe that their cashmere that is made in Scotland is really made in Scotland and produced in Scotland. So um, that quality is worth more to me than a plasticky looking, like a leather that looks like plastic bag uh, that costs more than the sweater, is produced 5,000 times more, and um, stitching is off, uh, sometimes the shapes are off. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my Chanel. I love it and I'll love it till the day I die, until the day I die and beyond, maybe even, if it's possible, but um, there's a limit to everything. For me, personally, when it comes to their classic bags, they have, with this last price increase, officially outpriced themselves out of the market. So I'm, I'm done with that. But my thirst for it has been satiated. But at the same time, this opens up wonderful new doors because I, I get to really enjoy the other aspects of, of, of their fashion, really, and, and hunting down wonderful pieces that make me feel really good. Wearing them and just living my own dreams. You know what I mean? You can wear it just like this. Just put it... <laughs> it's just bizarre. I'm wearing this like sportive shirt from Yoji or Y3, which is a blend of kind of a cotton and nylon. So it's like the total clash of this wonderful natural material and this kind of thing. But anyway, um, experimenting and, and also the type of service that you get at the boutiques. Let's just talk about this for a second. If you are purchasing um, garments, if you're trying on clothing, different type of service than if you're just in the department where the bags are and the costume jewelry is. Uh, different attention to detail. Um, you get your whole changing room, which is really huge, and the person working with you brings you stuff inside of, of the dressing room, which is big enough. You can sit in there. There's like a huge mirror. It's, it's, we're talking luxury. And things get measured on you, and things can get tweaked, and there's like a whole discussion on the fit. It's way more elegant and beautiful and then you get to really notice which sales associates are good sales associates are bad you know there's the ones that are specialized just in selling quickly accessories and bags but then when it gets to the nitty-gritty of kind of going into the changing room and figuring out whether or not a piece fits you what needs to be altered then you know who really knows their business because I think um, that's the fundamental part I mean Chanel is known for her uh, for her fashion, for her style, for her timeless style and the quality of her garments, after all. That's that's her legacy. We love her perfumes. We love her bags and accessories as well. But, well, technically, she started off making hats. That was kind of the first business she had. But quickly after that, from the hats, she passed on to garments, clothing. And till her dying day, you would see her photographed all the time in her ateliers in 31 Rue Cambon, just standing t tirelessly working on shoulders and trims and, and lengths and cuts. It's just amazing. Anyway, as sad as I am for, and that's why I'm a bit kind of energy-wise lower, as sad as I am for the world at the moment and all the hate that we're dealing with, as sad as I am for that, I'm also, uh, you know, <laughs> battling, trying to be happy for my birthday, but I'm also happy that people are finally standing up and that people are finally using their voice. Now, by using your voice, this, this is maybe a topic for a whole other video. Um, there are ways and ways of, of using your voice and uh, ways and ways of being heard. 
And there's also ways and ways to listen. And they're all very different, different worlds. Um, but I think one thing that unites us all is love. And there is no, there's no life without love. Um, for the heterosexual people out there who actually have kids, biological kids, uh, sure, you could have kids without love, but you, I mean, come on, if you're a sane, healthy, you're, if your soul is sane and you're a sane person, you're going to have children because you love your partner and you wish to, that unity and that love just blossoms into something else, which is uh, children and family, right? But of course, if you're not from that department and you um, are homosexual or, or you're single, you still have the right to adopt and you can give uh, a child um, all the love in the world. And that's the only thing that can uh, allow us to survive as a species, you know? There's no way for us to continue without love. So I'm just thinking, trying to be optimistic here and thinking positively, what happens if, politically speaking, the wrong parties win and the wrong people get into power and uh, wars begin and hate begin? But hate kills everything. There's no way humanity can survive without love. There's no way. There's no way that any living creature on this planet can survive without love, affection. A tactile type of emotion when you when you touch somebody um when you caress somebody you exchange love and it's it's so primordial and it, it's an instinct of survival and we will never lose that and ultimately if we're lucky enough that's going to be what will save us and what will bring peace again to this world which needs it more and more with each passing day thank you guys so much for watching um, I hope you like this unboxing. Very pretty, weird roller coaster ride of emotions from ecstatic to kind of low to kind of sad to happy. But I am fundamentally happy to be back and to be finally talking with you again. If you did like this video, please do thumb it up. Let me know what you think about the sweater, the cardigan in the comment section down below. And also if you have found in the sales in particular any cool, nice pieces uh, from Chanel lately. And... Um, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, but also follow me on all those Instagram profiles that I have, Super Deco, all spelled together, Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, and Chanel, uh, Coco Chanel Privé. I'm also on Patreon, and for my patrons, thank you so much for helping me and supporting me out. Without you, this channel would not be working, and thank you for your patience, because lately there haven't been videos, and I know it's been a drought of videos. Thank you to my patrons. I was saying that I have uh, been going through a drought of videos. Just wasn't feeling it. Thank you for your patience. More videos are coming. Uh, also to Patreon um, with exclusives to Patreon, but also longer versions to Patreon, which will include also the upcoming uh, top of the month perfumes with the behind the top of the month perfumes as well. So thank you guys once again to all of you. Uh, by the way, on Patreon, I'm Super Jacob, also all spelled together if you wish to check that out. Until next time, the only and best way for us, best and only way to survive is to never forget, to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.